Hi, my name is Winsley, and welcome to my beginner's guide on world events in Age of Wonders Planetfall. World events come in three categories. You have early game world events, mid game world events, and late game world events. I didn't actually know this until I looked up the um, the data on each of these world events when I was trying to figure out how many there were. Somebody recommended that I go into the the mod editor, which is kind of hard to find if you aren't very familiar with modding in Age of Wonders Planetfall. It's, it's hidden in the game underneath settings, I think. And uh, yeah, I saw that there's a few early game ones, a lot of mid game ones, and some late game ones. There's some overlap between when you can get the early game uh, world events and the mid game ones. So I'm not exactly sure what it qualifies as mid game or early game but I will be going over the early game ones first, as well as um, some strategies around them. I want to talk about what they actually say in the, in the screen that you get, which you can see on screen right now. We have the uh, colony ship crash event, world event up. And um, yeah, I think we can start talking about that one now in detail. So yeah, this one says that it will spawn in refugee camps all around the map every turn which can be picked up and will give the nearest colony an extra population which is pretty good it's it's not terrible some of the world events are negative but this one's this one's like slightly positive not amazing but can impact the um your, the amount of production some of your cities will be able to have and maybe if you are close to getting a sector this can help you get a sector up and running which is very very important when you uh, have some nice sectors around you that you want to get maybe it's going to give you some more cosmite or just energy to spend on operations or, or something like that um, with this event the uh, refugee camps can only spawn on land so you don't need to send people off into the water to try and grab refugees you may want to consider building scouts if you don't have a lot of scouts so that you can get to the refugee camps before the AI does. When I just got this event recently in the uh, game I was playing, I only had one spawn nearby me and I didn't actually see um, any others spawn in over the, those five turns, um, which means you know it's probably less of a priority to build scouts than if you get the Cosmite event or the uh, Weapons Cache event because I, I've seen that those ones spawn in a lot of pickups that you, you want to get to very, very quickly. But in the event that you do see this and it's uh, you do see a refugee camp spawn in between you and an enemy commander, you may want to rush building a scout so that you can get there first. So Perfect Climate will give you plus five food per a food worker and all biological and cyborg units will get plus 200 morale getting plus f five food per food worker means that you may want to consider moving as many workers as you can to food slots for the next five turns maybe not if it means that you won't be able to research something as quickly or um, you may not be able to build something that you need to build like infrastructure those things are still a priority so you may not want to spend every last one of your workers to um, you know food jobs but it's I think something that you should definitely consider trying to do because the the bigger your cities get uh, or rather the quicker you get pops the bigger your cities get and the more production they will be able to have especially if you are trying to get the sector exploitations around that city having that plus 200 morale is uh, it's it's good if you have biological and cyborg units in your armies and you're trying to fight people who do not have biological or cyborg maybe you're fighting against some mechanical units or some ethereal units like the sci-fish or the reapers and um, in that case you want to pursue combat but let's say you don't have a lot of biological or cyborg units you've been buying a lot of like sci-fish units and you don't see anything around you that um, you can engage easily that you know won't have that extra morale then maybe you want to avoid combat I mean the extra morale only gives you a plus 10% critical hit chance and makes it a little bit harder to get units to fumble um, but 
uh, it's not something you should completely ignore because when you know a critical strike goes through all of the repeating attacks will be hits whereas you might have missed a couple beforehand or bill weapons cache so this says that it's going to spawn some weapon pickups on the strategic map and in tactical combat a random unit will be hit with exploding debris for 10 thermal damage every two turns so yeah you, you're going to want to consider splitting off a couple units from your stacks maybe some flying units or some scouts to um, pick up these things as quickly as possible because they are game changing i have heard that you can get some tier three and maybe some tier four weapons from this event and it's um it's really good are we past all the early game stuff is there only a handful of early game things i thought i had more in here in my list oh i uh Looks like I didn't move this one down. This one's considered mid. I'm going to have to remember that for later um, so that it's organized properly. But in my notes, I put this as a, as a mid-game one. Um, so keep that in mind. You probably won't get it too early, but you may. And if you do, you want to grab those because a tier 3 weapon in the early game or mid-game is incredibly game-changing and will allow you to steamroll through a lot of sites and maybe through a commander. If you take out a commander early, then you've got basically twice the economy. So... Um, a really really powerful thing and if you don't like the weapon you can always sell it off for a little bit more energy to cast operations or, or build more units I think these things only spawn on land but I could be wrong about that weapon caches may be able to appear in water uh, so you know once we've got the final answer on that if you if you know please feel free to leave a comment below and uh, let me and, and the community know so I can let yeah I can we can guide people in the right direction uh, yeah if you have multiple weapons you'll be able to choose what weapons you use to attack different enemy types if you're attacking something that's got thermal resistance you don't want to be using something that does thermal damage and you you may be able to switch over to something that does psychic damage instead so having that those options is, is very nice it's it's good to have options um, somebody's saying, for example, you may get the armor bypass bow uh, when you're fighting against assembly, which is really nice, and they spam a lot of armored units. So it's it's yeah, it's good to have those weapons and those options for those situations. The secondary effect makes combat a little bit unpredictable, but not terribly unpredictable. It, it hits a random unit, and uh, that means that you may want to consider bringing in more um, or rather the, the same amount of units as you're facing off against if you have more that you're taking in say you bring in two stacks to fight six units then your units are probably more likely to get hit by an attack than the enemy unit if you bring in better units like higher tier units instead of just spamming out the tier ones you may be better off in combat but it is random there's no guarantee that combat will go your way if you you know do everything to prepare to you know get you the best numbers possible um yeah just avoid combat unless you have an overwhelming advantage because this could lead to you losing a unit that you otherwise wouldn't or maybe if you've got a lot of healing abilities and, and ways to recover that hp you can consider combat but i would probably avoid it while this is active all right so cosmite rain will spawn in cosmite pickups in random sectors every two turns during tactical combat, this causes displacement in a random unit every two turns, teleporting it a random distance from its original position. So yeah, this is this is one of the ones that I was talking about earlier. You really, really want this um, event if you're going to be modding units or building a lot of colonizers in the early game. You usually have to choose between the two, but if you have these pickups, you may not have to. You may have all the Cosmite that you need to build a colonizer and mod your unit. So, yeah go for this stuff if you can build scouts if you can maybe even rush them if it will allow you to get cosmite because rushing only costs energy sometimes you have an abundance of energy and you can you can afford to just get those units going certain scouts have a lot of uh, uses like the assembly one can heal and the runner one is invisible so you can like park it on people's locations and they won't get resources out of it um yeah I think that may be everything I wanted to say on the first half here. 
The secondary effect is pretty negligible as displacing units doesn't change how combat will play out too significantly. If you take damage, uh, the events that do damage are a far bigger effect than just teleporting away. Unless maybe you're Kirko and you rely a, a lot on swarm shielding, but even then, I don't, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it'd be that terrible for what a unit, yeah, a unit every two turns to be moved slightly out of position. If you bring more units into fight, they're more likely to have this. Uh, you're more likely to have that randomly selection selection to select one of your units. All the units and structures lose three vision. Units lose. <laughs> three range and tactical combat to a minimum of four. If you get this in a multiplayer, everybody is impacted equally, but according to uh, some people I was talking to in Discord earlier, uh, Sinsling and Ninju, the AI doesn't use vision like we do. It kind of pretends that it can't see everything and, and doesn't act aggressively on units that are camouflaged unless it, it finds it through a fair way. Uh, so yeah um the yeah the first half is is negligible against ai it does impact tactical combat quite significantly if you're attacking something that has a lot of attacks that are have big range say they have a lot of snipers then um during this event it would be a good time to go fight them but yeah uh if they're all melee this doesn't impact combat against them in any way it might just hurt you a little bit what else do we want to say yeah you may want to take your scouts back and and use them to support your existing armies during this event uh, things like the vanguard trooper are gonna suffer a little bit because their their range i think is seven the huntress is five so they're they're barely going to be impacted at all yeah, I think the Vanguard don't have any real melee units, so fighting against them will, will go better. While this event is active, you may want to consider attacking a Vanguard commander or taking on some Vanguard locations while this is affecting them. Alright, so supermoons will make it so that you get 100% more research income, and every two turns during tactical combat, there is a strength for chance... Um, for any any unit to have broken mind applied to them mindless units can't have broken mind applied to them so yeah it's not going to affect the mechanical units i believe at all and in the combat aspect and you may want to fight things that are going to suffer um that that penalty the broken mind penalty because uh yeah, especially if you're doing psychic damage, it's it's really nice to lower their morale. It it, it might not affect your guys if you've got psi resistance, so it's a pretty good event for psi number or celestian players. Having your research income increased means that you'll probably want to switch as many workers over to the um, research slots as possible, so that you can get basically twice as much out of those workers as if they were doing something else. Uh, is there anything else I put in my notes here? I wasn't reading from them. I think I, I covered most of the the important things. If you deal with psychic damage, this is pretty good, and you should be trying to get into combat. If you see things that can do psychic damage, you want to avoid them. I know there's some animals that can deal psychic damage, so they'll be quite scary while this is active. Yeah, you'll also make it more likely for you to apply status effects like Catatonic, so really, really good for Sinumbra. They have a lot of cool status effects like Catatonic. I think that's the main one, but there may be one or two others that I'm not thinking of right this second. I have heard that it can change how melee works quite significantly. I didn't actually test this because I heard about... Um, that after I generated this, and it's kind of hard to get what you want when you're trying to get these world events to spawn. Um, but yeah, the effect is coastal sectors produce double food, research, and energy. Water units get fast movement and two um, two hexes more on their their ranged abilities. Our range on their abilities. It's not on their ranged abilities. It says on their abilities. Uh, 
um, and more pickups spawn at random locations on the water. So you do want to send your scouts out into the water to try and pick up those that stuff. But you also want to consider building as many naval units as possible so that they can go pick up those spawns and also they can get in some fights, um, maybe with some commanders who have left their their land units out in the water. You'll be able to crush them quite easily with a lot of naval units if they do something silly like that, which they do do quite often. Um, the coastal sectors are the ones that are right off of the land. They're the ones that are they are touching land. If you go too far away, you won't have that, that coastal effect, I believe. Could be wrong about that. Um, so getting those exploitations up and running on those those coastal ones in the water is something that you probably want to do. You have 10 whole turns to while well, this is active, so you have a little bit of time to get them up and running. You, I might even consider rushing them so that I can get the extra food and research. And you know, if you're rushing, you're spending energy, uh, so you may not get extra energy, but in the long run, it may get you more energy than if you didn't rush it. So um, definitely worth keeping in mind that rushing is not the worst option here. Giving your water units fast movement will allow them to get flanking shots and to get into melee range a little bit quicker. And if you do get two more hexes on your melee attacks, then you're going to be able to crush people pretty, pretty hilarious ways. But uh, I would probably still go for naval units that can use ranged attacks so that they can engage the, the sites in the water who are more melee focused. Um, from further away and you know just kill them before they have to engage them at melee range I mean they won't have melee overwatch if they're not right next to you at least I don't think they will something that I haven't played around with too much don't just like send a non camouflage guy out and about hoping that they don't get picked off being in water is is risky because the AI can path through it very quickly you don't have mountains or terrain that it's not is not built for that has to go through like um, ruins I think slow down the marauder sacks quite a bit so it's it's very very scary um, it's very risky to just put a non camouflage unit out there off by itself the pickups can be left alone for a while because I've noticed that commanders AI commanders don't actually do a good job of picking up stuff out in the water so it's not nearly as urgent as some of the other pickups Okay, so several Promethean vaults appear around the map every turn, and range attacks have a four strength chance of applying burning to non ethereal and non mineral units. That's a really good one if you're playing Promethean because it basically gives you a bunch of landmarks which will um, give you some nice, unique stuff, some very powerful stuff. If you are playing against a Promethean, then you're going to want to start building some stacks who can take on Promethean units so that you can get this landmark and then eventually deal with that um, upgraded Promethean because they're probably going to have at least one of those landmarks in their space. So it's not necessarily all around amazing for a Promethean player because the other players will start thinking about how do I deal with all that, that burning and, and fire damage and maybe get some thermal resistance going. Uh, but I'd still say, yeah, definitely bet best for Promethean and it's pretty good for everyone else given that you can go get those landmarks too um range of tanks having a four uh strength chance of applying burning to non-ethereal and non-mineral units means that um you know if you're fighting anything other than side fish or quartzite you're probably going to have an easier time hitting them with ranged attacks so ranged units are better if you're facing a off against a melee stack. You, um, if you see a melee stack that you can, you can go engage, then probably consider doing that with a bunch of ranged units. If you have a bunch of melee units and you see a location with a bunch of ranged uni units, maybe consider waiting to do combat. It's only five turns that you have to wait, so you can go um, move your units around to locations that are far away that maybe you would have considered too far away to go towards. Um, if this event hadn't fired, but you know what? Sometimes you don't get what you want and you have to just make the best out of it. 
The locations um, that spawn, I believe, all give plus 40 production and plus 20 research, so it's going to be very easy to build things, and you should be able to get some mid-game research and late-game research a little bit quicker. Everybody's going to have to consider that as a factor when they're uh, facing off against people with those landmarks, which should be most of the players in the game. Reflective dust. All right, so... Reflective Dust says that all units have universal camouflage and range attacks have 20% decreased accuracy. So the AI does know about them. It won't impact the way they play too much, but they won't get aggressive with your units unless they get right up adjacent to them or, or they have the detection mod, I think. That's how that works. You can see camouflage units if you have detection um, and they're within the, the range of a unit that has detection. So um, keep that in mind if you're playing against AI, if you're playing against a human player, if you're playing an MP, then yeah, there may be some hidden stacks around that can pick off your colonizers or attack your other stacks. Maybe they keep all of them together so that they can rush you with a massive amount of units that you wouldn't have been able to see, or you, you would have been able to see if this event had not fired. Range attacks having a 20% decreased accuracy means that if you've got a melee build, you want to engage in combat against ranged attacks. And, uh, you know, if you've got ways to boost your accuracy, maybe you're, you can use some ranged attacks. But I would, I would probably keep my ranged units out of combat if at all possible. All right, in our colonies, the, these... All right. In our colonies, these echoes provide additional one resource for every worker working a, a job. And in tactical combat, it creates an echo of a random unit every two turns. So because this will um, give you more resources for every pop, basically, uh, you want to maybe consider putting your guys on food so that you can get more workers who can take advantage of this. Um, at least if you can get to a, another pop a little bit quicker you should so that you can get a little bit more resources out of it but um, I wouldn't probably move people around too much it just means that you'll have a slightly better economy for five turns it's pretty negligible getting one additional resource for five turns I do like the doctrines that give you that for the rest of the game but this is yeah it it's very short term um, it's a very minor benefit for the short term uh, yeah, I think having an echo of a random enemy unit can be really bad, or it can be okay. If it happens to a high tier unit, that's terrible. So prioritizing taking out the scarier units is slightly more important when this event is active, but, um, you know, if you want to just take out more of the enemy, then that might mean that you take less damage. It's very situational, depends on what you're facing up against. Uh, is that really all I want to say on this? I mean, I think so. It can really shift this the tide of battle. Somebody was saying if like you're facing off against a shepherd, they can get cloned, and that's that's horrible um, because they spawn in things when they get underneath a certain amount of HP, and I think they can heal each other. So the pheromones may be able to activate a second time. Yeah, they can evolve um, beetles, I think, shepherds, so that's what happened. I think they got two shepherds when they thought there was only one, and it made the beetles very scary. So definitely keep that in mind if you're thinking about engaging some shepherds or some scarier units, like uh, the evolved quartzites or, or something I'd be terrified to see get cloned. And seems very likely if you're you're going against them because they're they're very tanky they'll probably last at least two turns in combat all right aurora that is what is next on my list let's go find the aurora i'm terrified i'm going to miss one of these there's so many there's the aurora okay so all colonies gain plus six happiness income, and non-mindless units gain 200 morale, which makes sense, because I think mindless units are not impacted by morale. So basically units that can't get morale, get morale, 
and uh, you may be able to get some happiness events a tiny bit quicker. Um, but it probably won't have too large of an impact unless you can move workers around. And uh, yeah, then I could see it being kind of okay. 200 morale only gives you a, um, a better crit chance by 10%, and it will make you less likely to get negative morale, which will lead to fumbles. So um, if you're playing Psy Number and you really rely on lowering people's morale, this might mean you want to avoid combat for a little bit, but you may have extra morale, so I don't know. could be good. If you it's like your way that you apply status effects is through critical hits, then yeah. You don't have to avoid combat with this active. Superstorm. Superstorm is a fun one. I like Superstorm. It definitely changes the gameplay a lot more than just plus six to your happiness, and or rather the happiness in uh, colonies, and then a little bit extra morale for um, non-mindless units. Superstorm will be wariness. About, yeah, there. I found it. All right, so the storm travels in a line and uh, terraforms a number of sectors into arctic sectors every turn. The flying units now have a slow movement. I um I actually didn't see if there's like a special animation for the storm, and uh, I actually hadn't noticed that it travels in a line until I just read that right there. Turning things into arctic means that you'll be able to get um more research and I think production out of it yeah that's what I have in my notes you get more research and production out of places that have the arctic terrain um, it will give you a free level if you have a a uh, one of those exploitations on that terrain type um, and it, it may be that one of the ones that you that only had like one research icon or one production icon next to it when you had an existing thing maybe because you get more research if you in that sector due to a, a site and you just wanted to get that short-term income going and then this thing comes through it gives you two research things you get a little bit more i would probably consider going for the research and production um, upgrades researching those things in the research tree because you're, you're, it's going to be a little bit easier to get that stuff to apply. It's going to only be around for five turns, and uh, I think the number of sectors that get turned into Arctic are pretty limited, but I would still consider going for it based on that. Flying units having slow movement is going to really make flying units a lot less useful. Sometimes if they take a little bit of damage, I, I just like fly them as far away through some uh, over some walls so that other people can't get line of sight on them so easily or, or follow them and, and attack them um, you know from range or, or whatever but with slow movement they're, they're gonna be kind of stuck where they are uh, for a little bit longer or they won't be able to get as far away probably will get, take more damage as a result it will also take longer for them to move forward and engage enemies that are you know sitting in, in a certain location. I think you can remove that slow movement uh, in combat, but I don't know about that. You may be stuck with that while this event is active. Is there anything else I want to add to that based on my notes? Yeah, I think we're ready for the next one. After Superstorm is Giant's Perihelion? I, I want to say that's how you say that. Sounds right, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Not in my mind. I think I just got it wrong. <laughs> but I'll be very impressed if I got it right. This is one of the ones I got earlier. Found you. Okay, so all units have fast movement. When you have fast movement, it's easier to get a flanking shot because you'll be able to run further and uh, around people so that you have units on the right and on the left of it. And, you know, when one person flanks them, and the other one may be able to flank from the other side and just kind of like turn the unit a little bit. The heavier units do not turn, so it may be a little bit harder to get your flanking shot set up. But on top of that, it'll be 
your your melee units will have an easier time getting into melee range. If you are okay with sprinting them far forward, they're going to be able to sprint a lot further forward. I think like a, like a good three hexes forward, maybe just two, maybe four whole hexes further. Um, if they don't already have fast movement, which a lot of melee units start with. I know not all of them do. Some of the heavier ones won't be able to do that. Um, they don't start with fast movement, so this will benefit things like the Pteranodon, which has melee attacks but is heavy, and the um, the big pig, I forget what it's called. It's not the piglet, it's the, it's the other one that they added with the piglet. Uh, is there anything else I want to say here? All right, yeah. Let's move on to Crystal Meteors. I like this one quite a bit. It's fun. It changes the pace of things a lot, unlike the Giant's Perihelion thing. So this will create Quartzite spawners around the map, and mineral units will have plus two armor. This is really, really nice for Amazon commanders because they'll be able to farm either food off of those Quartzite or they'll be able to get a lot of nice Quartzite units on their side. They may be able to tame them with that nice operation. And if you're not an Amazon commander, if you've got an Amazon city, I think you can research that spell and uh, tame some units yourself. But the units won't be quite as good as if you were playing as an Amazon commander. I think they get a special little modifier on the animal units just to make it so, like, you know, it makes sense for them to go taming a little bit more than the other guys. If you see the spawners around you, you may want to consider not engaging them immediately because they'll have plus two armor on all their units. If you have a lot of psychic damage, if you can deal psychic damage, say you've got NPC, the Psyfish NPC um, faction units, then you can probably deal quite a bit of psychic damage and that just ignores armor. So. You don't have to wait if you've got that kind of those kind of units, or the Kirko have psychic snipers, so they can they can engage Quartzite a little bit better um, with those units and the Transcendence, and of course the Syndicate have a lot of psychic damage too. I think that was everything I had in my notes. Yeah, let's move on to. Magnetic field disruption. Where is that one? Magnetic field disruption is not satellite disruption. There you are. Okay, so this says that your influence income is reduced by 50%. Every two turns in tactical combat, static charges deal four arc damage, and you there's a four um, strength or arc strength chance to apply static charge to all units for two turns. So, yeah, generating less influence is, is pretty awful for all types of commanders. If you're playing nice and you're trying to get NPC faction units, you won't be able to get them nearly as often. You'll have to wait twice as long to get them from your influence income. I mean, questing is a thing, and you can't get influence through that way. Um, and that is actually better than it usually is when this event is active because, well, maybe you want to build a forward base. Completing a quest would allow you to do that a little bit quicker than um, if you're just relying on your income. Uh, yeah, evil commanders have to use influence on covert operations. I know not everybody likes covert operations. I think Ninju was saying earlier that it's not efficient, uh, but that's an opinion. I know a lot of a lot of people actually disagree online. I've had a lot of people tell me that I undervalue covert operations. They're incredibly good, and you should be using them. But I I agree with Ninju. I, I'm not a giant fan of them. I think that you're better off spending your influence on uh, NPC faction stuff. Uh, yeah, the fact that your the secondary effect um, uh, the secondary effect impacts all units means that it will impact um, most players the same way. But units with arc resistance, like assembly units or uh, the crystal quartzites, will take less damage, and um, 
they'll be less likely to have static charge applied to them. Static charge only reduces arc resistance. It doesn't apply damage over time, so it's not like the worst status effect to get applied to units. Four damage seems pretty minor too. There's a lot of other ones that, that deal a lot more damage. Um, a lot of other events that deal more damage to, like, I think, a few units rather than everybody. But I could be wrong about that. There may be one that I'm forgetting about right this second. Um, yeah, looks like we're ready for what's next. What's next on the list? Ionic Nebula. Where are you on this? Ionic Nebula, there you are. Found you. <clears throat> so it makes it so that your energy generators will increase, um, will make 50% more energy and um, every two turns during tactical combat electrical discharges remove one shields from all units I'm not entirely sure but I think this basically means that your your energy income overall is is 50% uh, more I could be wrong maybe the energy energy generators are just your central building uh, but I, yeah I think it applies to exploitations and uh, workers as well which, if it does, that's really cool. Energy is used for operations and building units, so you'll you'll be able to do either a lot more operations or build a lot more units with with that option there or with that effect on on your empire. Uh, what did I have here? Is it less energy? I put less in my notes. It's an increase. Come on, learn to read. Um, while this is going on, energy pickups will be less valuable, energy rewards will be um, less of a thing that you want when you're clearing out landmarks, but sometimes you know you just don't get that much out of taking the reward, so I could see you selling some rewards still. It's not, it's not the worst if like, you, you really hate the unit that it's offering you as a reward for the quest. You, you can just pass on that. It's not the end of the world. If your units do not have any shields, like the Devar units or the assembly units, this secondary effect is, is negligible. It doesn't impact you in any way, shape, or form. But if you're playing like the, the Kirko or the Syndicate, you're going to be more vulnerable. So, um, yeah, let's say you have a Syndicate. If you're using Syndicate units and you're fighting a assembly commander, you may want to try and avoid combat for five turns. In the other situation, um, if you're like... Uh, an assembly commander fighting a syndicate. You may be, you may want to try and push combat as much as possible. Um, and the same is true for clearing out locations. If you're going against something that has lots of shields, this is, it may be a good time to go attack them. If you're going against something that only has armor and you have shields, uh, maybe wait a little bit before you go out and and pick a fight. All right. Coronal mass ejection. Where are you in my list? You near the bottom? Yeah, you are. Of course you are. Why wouldn't you be? So colony production is reduced by 50% every two turns during tactical combat. Hot embers deal four damage, and there's a four thermal strength chance for char to be applied for two turns. Uh, reducing colony production is massive. It it means that you're gonna be able to you're gonna have to take twice as long to build structures or build units, and most of the time you're doing one of those two things. Every once in a while you're generating resources, um, but I think that this is pretty awful because um, you only do that when you have enough units out there, and I don't know. I, I guess. I, I think most of the time you want more units. If you have more units than you need, then you're probably not pushing enough combat. You're probably not being aggressive enough on the map. Um, so yeah, while this is active, you probably want to consider generating energy or, um, or research. I mean, your production is going to be reduced, so you're not going to get quite as much out of that generation. It's up to you if you feel like doing that. Uh, but, you know, building stuff doesn't sound like a great idea. Moving your workers around off of production is is a is a priority though. 
you don't want to keep workers on that if that's uh if this colony production is reduced by 50 percent for two turns or for five turns rather uh, is that all i have here in the notes oh production rewards for clearing landmarks and completing quests are definitely more valuable while this is active so you may want to consider doing stuff like that what the devar get from prospecting is definitely going to be more valuable if you can get a, a devar city and then push out some prospectors uh, while this is going on, I would definitely consider doing that because you'll get a lot more production You'll be that you're probably lacking while this is all going on. Um, yeah, I think that's a good piece of advice, something I almost forgot about. I wrote that last night, I think, and just completely forgot. So yeah, this secondary effect applies to all units, at least I believe it does, like the one with, the, with arc damage. Um, it works pretty much the same way. It will deal a little bit of damage, and uh, if you guys have thermal resistance, then they won't suffer nearly as much. If you got like a magma quartzite or a Promethean unit, they're going to be a little bit safer while this stuff is going on. Um, chard makes it so that your thermal resistance is lowered. So yeah, it's it's very very similar to the arc resistance event. I think that one reduced something um, other than production, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I think maybe that was the influence one. Would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay, acid rains. Let's go find acid rains. Where is that one in here? Okay, so colonies produce 50% less food every two turns during tactical combat. Rain will melt away one piece of armor on all of the units. Uh, yeah, like with the last event, you're going to want to take your people off of food production and try and look for landmarks that give you just clumps of food and uh, pickups that give you a little bit of food because it's going to be slightly more valuable while this event is active. If everybody else has less food, they're not going to be growing their, their cities as quickly. So um, by grabbing that stuff, you'll you'll get something that they're lacking and that you're lacking. And uh, yeah, I think as a, as a result, it'll be better off for you in the long run to have that stuff in your, your possession versus going elsewhere. Uh, if you don't have any armor on your units, then this is, this is a great time to go into combat, although I think most units focus more on armor than shields. So it's more likely going to affect you than the thing that, that uh, reduced your shields um, every two turns in tactical combat. I think you know you may want to consider fighting the quartzites and stuff unless you're you're going to fight them with psychic damage then it's it's not a factor um because you know you bypass the armor anyways reducing armor doesn't matter if you just go right through it right i think that's everything i wanted to say on that amazon commanders get quite a bit of food from killing animals that's definitely worth mentioning and we'll have a big economic advantage after this, so you may want to consider either allying with them or avoiding them and letting other people deal with their units before you engage the Amazons, but that's entirely your call. Satellite overcharge. Where is that one? There's satellite overcharge. So satellite overcharge. <clears throat> All strategic operations and tactical operations have their energy and uh, influence removed, which means you're going to be able to spam them as as um, long as you have points. You may want to consider researching the uh, tactical or strategic operational um, techs that give you more of those points, because that means that you'll just be able to get some more effects. And if you don't have a lot of great operations, you may want to research those as well. I think those are in different trees. One is economic, one is military, so going for those is probably a really good call while Sally Overcharge is active. Um, yeah, if you can boost your defenses, that will that'll help you a lot to go keep the AI from targeting you and they'll target other people. Alright, so I think we're ready for the next one. Let's see what the next event is. I think it's satellite disruptions. Let's go find satellite disruptions. There 
There it is. So this makes it so that your strategic and tactical operations, excluding you know doomsday and doctrines, are gonna cost double energy. So it's not gonna affect your the amount of influence that you cost uh, you spend on it. Your covert operations are are uh, that use the influence aren't gonna be affected. There are some that use energy. So uh, yeah, you may want to consider not using them for the next five turns. I know that's a while in game. But it could be worse. It could be ten turns. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like the opposite of, of overcharge. Uh, it punishes people who went down the path to get the strategic operations and tactical operations. Um, so I wouldn't research that stuff while this is active, unless it, you won't get it until after afterwards, and it doesn't really matter. You can keep going for that um, and get the the added bonuses after this event has disappeared. Spending energy on building units uh, will be a better investment, um, so go for that if you've got some spare energy. Well, you know, this is still affecting stuff. Short-lived nanites. Let's go find short-lived nanites. Getting close to an hour. I'm gonna have to cut some stuff out. All right. So short-lived nanites will make it so hurrying production costs 50% less energy. Cyborg and mechanical units are healed 8 HP during tactical combat and have a 10% um, chance to fumble their attacks and abilities. I believe that is they're going to heal 8 HP per turn in tactical combat, which is very different than if it only heals once when they start tactical combat that could be how it works and it would be really really uh, it'd be a shame because that sounds really cool for the assembly because they can they can regenerate hp through simulation in melee combat and that plus this means they'd be very very strong um considering that they i think they put the uh 10 percent chance to fumble their attack there so that the assembly aren't all around amazing in melee while this is active, if you, they were just healing up all the time and there was no negative to this, then maybe it'd be too good. But it may be that I'm just reading that wrong. It could be very different. I didn't test this out. Hurrying production uh, being cheaper means that the Devar are going to be in a slightly better situation. They love hurrying production. They've got, I think, a minus 50% on, on it to start with. And this combined with that means, yeah, you should probably consider hurrying production a lot more if you're Devar, and maybe a little bit more if you're not. Is that all we wanted to say on this? Kirko and Amazon do not use Cyborg or Mechanical, so their units get no combat boons from this event. They may want to avoid combat with other people for a bit, and other people may want to consider attacking the Amazon and Kirko players if they can afford to in the next 10 turns. 10 turns is quite some time, so I think it's definitely something you could plan around once this pops. Next event is Pirate Uprising. It's a fun one. Pirate Uprising. So a pirate base will appear on the map every turn. And during combat, wreckage will hit five units every two turns, which will maybe stagger them, which is okay. It isn't as terrible as other things. The uh, secondary effect may stagger some units. It may make it so your snipers can't um, get a full uh, damage shot off, but I like putting stagger resistance on them, so I feel like that it's pretty negligible. You can you can ignore it if you got stagger resistance, and it might make it easier for you to deal with enemy snipers. Like a, I don't think the AI puts stagger resistance on them nearly as much as it should. So yeah, keep that in mind if you see some snipers that you want to go attack. Um, spawning in pirate bases can be really good for certain commanders, but not not really that big of a deal if you're playing other ones because you know you go kill them you get the reward and uh maybe some experience well you would get experience for killing them which i think is good i like getting experience of course there is a cap on that so more experience isn't always better but generally farming up experience is a is a good strategy make your units a lot harder to deal with i think heritor 
we'll be able to get lots drained with mods from pirate bases and um, if you have the forgotten NPC faction you can you can use this uh, this event to get a lot of modded desolate it's very cool it's very powerful to get modded desolate next event or right. yeah I think overseers can farm off indentured and there's a celestial unit that can farm pops off as well we can move on now I think There's only a handful of late game events, so we'll just run through those quickly and wrap this up. Definitely thinking I'm going to have to cut some of this out. I hope it's not too hard to follow what I've been trying to say. Alright, so let's go to Interstellar Trade Convoy. So interstellar trade convoy will make it so that your um, option to generate energy or generate knowledge will be slightly better. It's not like that much better. It only is an increase of 25%. It goes from 25% conversion rate to 50%. So you may want to consider generating resources in your cities a little bit more, but I think it's it's something that when I see this pop, I could I'm just gonna close it again and ignore it because that that amount of resources that you're gonna get in the late game it's gonna be very very negligible. It's not gonna impact the game very much at all. Um, yeah, I think we can move on to the next one. It's it's not a cool event. I think it'd be great if they changed how this one actually works a little bit. If it was a hundred percent conversion rate. That's an entirely different matter, but 50% its just not impactful enough. Planetary Pollen Cloud. So Planetary Pollen Cloud will make it so that your food income is doubled. All biological and cyborg units gain 200 morale and regenerate 10 HP every turn. I think that is every strategic turn. If that is every tactical turn, wow, that's really, really good for your biological and cyborg units. And I guess, you know, a lot of, a lot of factions have access to that, so... Actually, wait, yeah, every action, every faction has biological or cyborg units, um, so it, it would impact people pretty equally. But it would make, uh, yeah, combats take a lot longer if you've got lots of uh, things with a lot of cooldowns. You'll be able to stay in the fight longer and able to use those skills that have cooldowns a little bit more if that works the way I think it might. Um, but yeah. Income of food being doubled means you're probably going to put more workers on food. Given that this is a late game event, it may be that you have your cities as big as you need them to be. So it, it may be something that you don't play around with at all. That's up to you. If you've got smaller cities, definitely focus them on food production while this is active. It'll be a lot, lot better. You may be sharing food already to get them to grow. So um, that will just make the whole process a little bit faster and maybe more efficient. Having plus 200 morale is only ha like having a plus 10% crit chance or, you know, making it harder for you to get negative morale and, and fumbling at your, your attacks. Plant and B units having um, plus 20% damage means the growth faction are going to be a lot harder to fight against. If you can get those units on your side while this is active, then I would definitely pursue combat. If you see that your enemy has a lot of them, you want to avoid combat for five turns and... uh you definitely don't want to be at war with the growth NPC faction. That that seems like really risky while this is active. All right, the next one is actually I do want to mention that the Amazon uh, commanders have plant units. They have a couple plant units, so you may want to avoid combat with the Amazon. And if you are an Amazon, then or if you have Amazon units, then you want to pursue combat a tiny little bit more. White Star Supernova. Alright, so 
white star supernova will make it so that you see a couple more volcanic sectors on the map. It will um, transform a few sectors every turn into volcanic, and units will have all resistances reduced by three. The turning things into volcanic is not terrible if you're playing Devar or if you have the, um, I think it is adaptive exploitation because I think that makes it so that it doesn't have economic penalties. Um, but if you if you don't have that, this is going to happen for 10 more turns and one of your sectors is probably going to get affected. So you, you want to pursue those types of, of technologies uh, just to keep your economy from falling apart on you. The reduction um, in damage resistances is pretty massive if uh, you've got a way to do damage to a lot of units. I know that the Cynumbra and the Syndicate have a lot of attacks that can jump from one unit to another, and if you have AoEs that is similar in that it will affect a lot of people, and it will help end the fights a lot quicker. If you've got an aggressive playstyle, now's the time to go to war. If you got a defensive one, you may want to avoid fighting because you may not be able to tank as much as you are expecting to be able to to tank. I have heard that you know the Sign Number Syndicate is a very powerful combination for this event. Um, Malactors can get their psionic damage jump, and if you put some arc mods on, you can you can um, you can have that stuff jump, and both of them apply really can apply some really nasty stats effects like catatonic or stun. So yeah, I would love to play around with that with this event, but you know you you choose your your person in the beginning. You don't know what events you're gonna get. Next one is earthquake. Okay, a few oh, earthquake says a few sectors have been transformed into mountains, mountainous. Um, in tactical combat, aftershocks have a strength 8 chance to apply stagger to all land units and cause 10 damage to a large amount of obstacles. Having things turn into mountainous means the AI is going to have trouble pathing around the map a little bit more and you may be a little safer. I would recommend building a little bit more flying and floating units because they'll be able to get around the mountains a little bit quicker and uh, you'll probably be able to outmaneuver the AI quite well with them. The uh, stagger to all land units is it's it pretty likely to go through but if you've got stagger resistance on those land units um, you'll probably be okay I love putting stagger resistance on my people I think that there are a lot of things that can stagger and the AI doesn't put enough stagger resistance on their guys so it's probably more likely to hurt the AI than it is to hurt you and um, having 10 damage done to obstacles just means that it's going to be slightly harder to defend cities. I think uh, they'll be able to get up on the walls and, and do some damage to you a little bit quicker, but it's not going to outright destroy them. 10 damage isn't the end of, uh, of an obstacle. I don't think it is, at least. Um, yeah. I believe we can move on now. Is this the last one? Fungal Awakening? It is. All right, let's take a quick look at Fungal Awakening. Okay, Fungal Awakening says every turn a few sectors will be transformed into fungal and the spore hazards will appear in those sectors. Fungal sectors are good at food and research, so it may transform some of your things that aren't able to get to level 5 exploitation into fungal and then that may allow you to get the uh, free um, food or free research level that comes from that terrain um, taking to the level 5 which would be really really nice if you are able to uh, if you haven't already researched those upgraded buildings I would definitely consider doing that it's going to be a lot easier to set up those those upgraded things in the um, all the sectors around the map, especially if you're lucky and you get a lot of the fungal ones spawning in, in your, your spaces where you already have that stuff going or are nearby your places and you can get a level 5 stuff from it. Um, 
Spore Hazard Clowns, I think, are really terrible for most players unless you're playing Xenoplague. If you're playing Xenoplague, this can be a really, really good thing for you, make it a lot easier for you to attack your enemies or defend your own cities. If you got Spore Hazard Cloud in your city or in your sector with your city, then um, I think that yeah, there's there's like some stuff to do with regenerating HP and stuff stuff that you won't have to deal with uh, just because there's like some synergy. I I think the only negative thing is it'll lower your happiness a little bit, but yeah, that's definitely worth overlooking. All other commanders definitely want to look into hazard removal because it'll make it a lot easier for them to deal with uh, any Xenoplagues out there or just to like get rid of the economic penalties that come with this, which are pretty significant. If you think you're going to have Xenoplague units fighting near you, you definitely got to get rid of that hazard as soon as possible. And that's it. That's all of my strategy notes. I think we've covered all 27 of the events. Hope I didn't leave any out. If uh, you know about anything that I left out or if you got any thoughts you want to add to what I've shared here, please feel free to do so. I'll see you around. Have a good one.